Eric Darling, right here with you, live, sort of. I mean, I, I feel I feel pretty lively. Uh, today, what are we going to talk about? Um, I don't know. Probably, how about some index design strategy? All right. We're going to talk about uh, how indexes affect filtering and ordering, and we're going to talk about why... I think for the 10 bajillionth time, why SQL servers missing index requests are quite often underwhelming in their very existence, and how there is only one person to blame for that. And he doesn't care. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's make sure we got nothing going on here. Oh, God, I had some statistics. Look at these awful things. I bet they're duplicates. I bet someone should delete those for performance. <laughs> that was a callback to another video. Welcome, welcome to my brain. Uh, it's awful. It, it's not a good place to, to be. <laughs> it's treachery. All right, so we got two queries here. Let's make sure query plans are enabled because those are important for ev everything that we do. Uh, <clears throat> they, they mostly function correctly, which is nice. Sort of like my brain, mostly functional. So we're going to run these, and uh, we got no indexes right now at all. Zero, zero indexes. Uh, both of these queries return the required 5,000 rows. The problem is that neither one of these queries is great and fast and amazing. Uh, when we search for a sort of small amount of data, we scan a clustered index, we sort all our data, and it takes about 600 milliseconds. It's not the end of the world, but you know what? Not every, not every query tuning exercise needs to start with something that takes 35 minutes and uh, ends with someone being like, that dude, I added an index, and it was three seconds. Not, it's, not, it's, not every, it's not every story. Not, not everything ends that way. It's annoying. Uh, and when we search for more data, and we have to do some more sorting, uh, we end up spilling a little bit here. Ouch. Ouch, I chihuahua. And then uh, this one takes about 1.1 seconds. So almost twice as long as this one on account of this sorty, spilly thing over here. And I guess there's like 100 milliseconds on that. Now, uh, these queries have both asked for the exact same index on post type ID, last activity date as the key columns because they're in the where clause. And then include score and view count. Uh, because they are in the query, but they are not in the where clause. Our only columns in the where clause are right here. Post type ID and last activity date. We are ordering by score descending right here. Which seems important. This seems like something... This seems like something that, that an index would help with. Doesn't it? Seems like we maybe had an index. Maybe, maybe we wouldn't have to sort that data. Maybe we wouldn't have to risk spilling that data disk. Maybe we could have these queries run and not ask for any memory. Wouldn't, wouldn't all of these things be grand? The thing is, it's the, the, the index that SQL Server asks for, which is just about this one, right? If you remember the green text above, uh, here's our where clause columns, and here's our, oh, they just happen to be there columns. So let's create this one. And I'm going to name this index whatever because I'm allowed to do whatever I want. It's my computer. And in the words of John Crook, I'm taking my ball and going home. So this index takes a minute to complete because, uh, well, you know, there, there has been some chatter recently. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a video about why some indexes are slow. And, of course, uh, Paul White saw that video and uh, absolutely dumped on me with the technical details for why. <laughs> the actual technical details for why it's slow, not just me being like, yeah, because they ended up on like three threads and it stunk. He like broke down the entire algorithm of, of, on, of parallel index creation. Uh, I, will, I will find the link to that and put it in the show notes because uh, gosh, is, gosh is it impressive. <laughs> All right, so now we have the index that SQL Server asked for. Both of these queries will use that index, and both of these queries will, uh, well, sort of benefit from it. This query does spectacularly with it. Does great. Four, four milliseconds in a seek, six milliseconds in a sort. This one 
gets about, tw this one does better too, right? It's about twice as fast as it used to be, right? It went from 1.1 seconds to about 600 milliseconds. So now this query with the index is about as fast as this query was with no index, <laughs> just the clustered index on the, on the, on the, on the uh, post table. So, and this is, uh, this is the sort of mixed bag that you get from most of Microsoft's advice. Uh, some things, yeah, they get better. Other things, nah, not so much. It's not great. It's not fantastic. It's just okay. Uh, so let's let's try an index that I I see a lot of people uh, go for when when they're dealing with this stuff because a lot of people have this strange misconception about uh, how indexes work, and a lot of people will uh, think that if they have to sort by something, that that sort column has to be the leading column in the index. Right, so because we're ordering by score descending, they well, think, whoa, well, we're ordering by score descending. That better be first so that we have that index sorted by that. So let's, let's recreate the index with score descending first in the index. And we're going to see what happens in this case, which is, well, I should probably not hover down too low uh, because that's going to completely spoil the, the final index that we're going to create. And um, I don't know. Ruin the whole video. <laughs> Way to go, me. All right, so let's run these two now. And with score very first in the index. Well, it kind of flip-flops here, doesn't it? Ugh, this one slowed down a lot. This one is slower than it's ever been. Now, both of these, no, both of these queries are single-threaded now. Uh, and the second query, well, this one, uh, holy cow, zoom it. What, are you, what is on your mind? This one really fast, right? This one's crazy fast now. This one, crazy slow now. The reason for that is because, well, to talk about post type IDs a little bit, post type ID fours are pretty rare in the data. Uh, there are not a lot of post type IDs for most of the post type, I, most, most of the post types in the Stack Overflow database are one where there are about 6 million, two where there are about 11 million, and then three through like eight or something, which there are like a few hundred thousand. So post type by D4 is rare. So once we sort by score, it still takes a whole lot of like, it still takes a whole lot of like scanning through to find uh, all the, find post type by D4 columns in that index. So that's not a very good index choice either. So we still have very mixed results. We have, we've, we've created two indexes now. The first index helped the first query and sort of helped the second query. The second index completely just neutered the first query and really helped the second query, right? The second query is now as fast as the first query was with the first index. Promise that makes sense. So let's go with a third index here because one thing that a lot of people overlook about B tree indexes is that when you navigate them correctly with equality predicates, uh, order is preserved throughout the throughout the throughout the the, the second the column after the the equality predicate. So where you know columns for like post type ID where there are a lot of duplicates, you're going to have like a whole lot of the number one, and then all the scores in like for that range of number one are going to be ordered. Uh, descending in this case, because we said descending in the, in the index definition right there. Look at us. Look at us go. And so that, that helps, right? Because we seek to the number one first in the index, and then we have score in the order we care about. And then last activity date, I mean, that's an inequality predicate over here. So, you know, it's, it's maybe not the most ideal situation to have score gatekeeping uh, last activity date Maybe some situations where I wouldn't want that, but uh, now with that index in place, both of these queries are equally as deliciously fast. Now the important thing is, let me uh, bring these up. Let me get it in there, squeeze in there. Everyone, hug, big hugs for everybody. So the two important things that this index did for the for the query that we're running here: uh, one, it allowed us to seek to the post type ID that we care about. Uh, two, I uh, notice that there's no sorting in this index, in this query, query plan rather. There's no sort operator. There's a top, but we don't need to sort the data because after we seek to post type ID, we have score in the order that we want it to be. Then we're able to evaluate our uh, last activity date predicate uh, as the final part of the, the seek, but it's, it is a residual predicate, 
right? It is a predicate way up here in the residual nosebleeds. And if Zoomit would listen to me, we would have a much better video. We would have high quality videoing. So uh, last activity date is, is a residual predicate up here. Post type ID is a seek predicate in here. And uh, yeah, we don't do any sorting. So without needing to, without, without actually having to sort data, again, the stuff that we avoid, you know, if this were a properly parameterized query, we would, uh, we would avoid like, um, you know, parameter sensitivity issues with memory grants. Uh, we would avoid, you know, potentially spilling the disk, potentially asking for way too much memory for some executions. Uh, we would not avoid green screen fuzzies over there. Those are annoying. But anyway, uh, a little bit about index design there, uh, a little bit about how to approach uh, different index design choices. Uh, remember that the missing index request feature has a lot of blind spots and does not uh, aim to please every area of your query. It only aims to please the where clause. Uh, other relational areas that are great, <laughs> relational areas, yuck, uh, that, that are good to index for, like order by, group by, joins, things like that. Uh, it just ignores them and sticks those columns in the includes, uh, which isn't cool at all. So uh, careful, careful with those. Careful, careful with the green text, as they say on 4chan. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go do something um, with my life. I don't know what it is. Might be good, might be bad, might jump out a window again. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you like this video, um, compelling comments, thumbs ups uh, are great, great ways to tell me. Um, if you don't like the video um, and, and you feel so utterly driven to click the thumbs down button, uh, I mean, you can tell me why if you want. I don't care. I'm, you can also just click thumbs down and I'll just say, oh, you're that one person again. Uh, but <laughs> you can also share, share, your, share your thoughts and feelings with me. I want, I want to know. I want to know what love is. Oh, actually, for you, it's probably, probably hate or something, right? You're giving me a thumbs down. Uh, if you like SQL Server content about performance tuning, indexing, query tuning, what other spam SEO words can I throw in this? I think I've run out. Uh, subscribe to my channel. A lot of other people do. We're coming up on like 4,000 people. 4,000 people get notified uh, whenever, whenever, I, whenever I say something, which is strange, um, to say the least. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching.